Hi, I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge and hypnosisdownloads.com and welcome to 7 Steps to Self-Belief, how to develop powerful tools to get your mind on your side. So picture this, the crowd waits, surely he's going to die. How can he survive a dive from such a massive height into a tiny pool of water? But he can fly, only he doesn't yet believe it. He's been shunned all his life as a freak with gigantic ears. He's lost his magic feather and think that without it he can't fly. Timothy Mouse desperately frantically tells him, it's not the feather, it's you. You can fly, forget the feather, it's time to dive. And he falls and the crowd gasps. But just as he's about to smash into the shallow water, Timothy's words come back to him, it's you Dumbo not the feather. It's you all the time. And at last he flies and he doesn't need the feather. Finally truly believing in himself, he escapes the captive circus. And this is about your escape, how you can disregard magic feathers and believe in yourself. Why you need self-belief. Self-belief is vital. How many things have you not done or tried because you lacked belief in yourself? Many fail to believe in themselves because others didn't. Take my friend Dumbo. But as Eleanor Roosevelt said, and so deftly put it, nobody can make you feel inferior without your consent. Yet self-doubts creep in, don't they? Like unwelcome house guests that keep calling around simply because you've played host to them before. Doubts such as, can I really do this? Other people are better smarter, more worthy than me. What will other people think if I do or say this? I can't risk failure. Success is for others, but not for the likes of me. If you sometimes have trouble believing in yourself, then absorbing and practicing these tips I'm about to give you could make all the difference. So tip number one, remember self-belief is learnable. Your level of self-belief isn't set in stone. It's not unalterable. We can all be flexible and change and even fly, so to speak. Remember you were born into this world with no sense of what you could or couldn't do. Then bit by bit, life started to teach you to limit yourself. A very young child never says, I'm not the kind of person who could climb that tree. They haven't yet learned to limit their own horizons or listen to people who leak pessimism. One of the first steps is to re-examine and discard many of the limiting ideas you have about yourself. Ideas that you've somehow collected along the way and swallowed. Step two, deal with the inner negative voice. When you start to doubt yourself, listen for a moment to that little negative inner voice. What's it saying? Whose voice is it really? You weren't born into the world with that voice. Is it a parent's voice, an old school bully, a collection of lots of different voices from different times and people? One thing's for sure, that little inner self-critical voice wasn't yours originally. It doesn't really belong to you. It may masquerade as belonging to you now, but it doesn't really. Tell yourself, this is not my true voice. Then start to challenge it and also to just plain ignore it. Step three, flip a weakness into a strength. So Dumbo, our cartoon uh, quadruped, was humiliated by his outsized ears. He hated them at first, but through time he came to use them to fulfill his destiny even, by changing his attitude. If we just focus on what is not right about ourselves rather than what is, then we miss opportunities for self-belief. We shouldn't assume there's nothing to improve about ourselves, but just focusing on perceived weaknesses without either A, taking steps to improve them, or B, also giving fair focus to all our strengths, gets us nowhere. For example, if you know that you can be stubborn, then find the positives in this. Stubbornness, used well, is called single-minded determination. If you worry a lot, know that the positive flip side of this is that you have a powerful imagination, which in the right context can be put to good use and used as a great tool. Take any negative belief you have about yourself and creatively flip it so that it becomes, in turn, a positive resource. Think ears, Dumbo. And you'll find this exercise actually 
creative and fun one to do. The next tip is a favorite of mine. Tip four, develop your superpowers. Think of the typical powers of the more popular superheroes and write them down before you start your day. They may be such things as super speed, the ability to climb walls or fly unaided or x-ray vision or whatever. So why do I suggest this? Because priming your mind with qualities and positive characteristics can actually determine your behavior. Not that you'll start flying to the rescue of stranded citizens, but the pattern of superhero powers is one of ability, courage, and competence. So in one study, people asked to write down as many superpowers as they could think of were more likely to give to charity months afterwards. The pattern of giving to charity is that of being able and strong. Prime your mind with able words before you start each day. As well as superhero powers, write all kinds of other positive characteristics, whether you think you have them or not. Do this before you go out. For example, I might write um, strength, dignity, calm, intelligence, humor, generosity, quick wittedness, charisma, sex appeal, approachability, popularity, determination, and so on. And I'm not just asking you to focus on your own present or even future qualities here, but just on the words. Just write, taking time to write as many of these types of words down before you go out socially or do anything. And take a few minutes writing them down each day, then a few moments running your eyes up and down your list. It doesn't matter if it's a similar list every day. Really reflect upon what each word means to you, what the actual characteristic means. And you'll be amazed how doing this will powerfully prime your unconscious mind. Step number five, be your own motivational coach. If you notice um, doubts rearing their ugly heads, imagine you, the clear-headed part of you, are the coach and the anxious part of you is the person you need to talk to in order to help develop. Think of what you'd say to someone you really believed in if they started showing doubts. Sit down and say those same things to yourself. So if you're about to um, go for a job interview and you hear yourself starting to express doubts, take a few moments to sit down, close your eyes and coach yourself. You know, you might say things like, look, you can do this. It's natural to feel a little anxious, but that just means you care about what you're doing. You've got all the relevant experience and qualifications. Now get in there and stop whinging. Okay, so you're gonna be a bit tough with yourself. Even if you don't get this job, you're going to make me proud by giving it your best shot. Picture the decent, friendly, straight-talking coach in your mind. Is it someone you know or would like to know? And that's a part of your mind. Talking to yourself in these times um, as if you were another person in the privacy of your own head can ramp up your confidence fast. Tip six, do hero training. Hero training is a great way to increase your own self-belief. So I once treated a young boy for emitophobia, which is fear of, in his case, other people vomiting. And he told me about a time his sister had been sick and how terrified he'd been. And later I discovered he loved Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. And this was, this was a few years ago. And we talked about how Arnie would have coped with his sister being sick with this young boy's sister being sick. And I got this little boy to hypnotically watch the Austrian muscle man heroically dealing with other people vomiting in lots of different scenarios. And I got this little boy to strongly imagine that he was Arnie and what it was like to deal with sickness and so on as his hero. He overcame what had been a severe phobia by borrowing the traits of his hero and making them his own. It was easier for this little boy to believe in Arnie dealing with other people being sick than it was to imagine himself dealing with it. And that must have been about 20 years ago. So bit by bit, he transferred the cool, calm, collected, decisive action from his hero to himself. Think of a situation in which you lack self-belief and it holds you back. Then think of your hero, who could be a world leader, a relative, a movie hero, or someone down the street, it doesn't matter. Someone who would deal with that situation in a way you admire. Now close your eyes and strongly imagine them dealing with the situation heroically or well. Now imagine being them for a few moments, experiencing that time in their shoes. 
Keep doing this until you notice you can start to transfer a sense of their qualities to yourself and make those qualities your qualities. Tip seven, create a powerful vision of yourself. Self-belief comes not just by trying to convince yourself you can do stuff, by trying to con yourself that you're wonderful. True self-belief actually comes from developing the vision that you can relax socially or start that business or write that book or whatever it is you need to be believe in yourself about. Get into the habit of sitting down, closing your eyes and watching yourself behaving decisively, calmly and strongly. This powerful visualization exercise means you can learn from yourself how to be confident, have self-belief and behave in ways which maximize chances of success. You know, imagine you're viewing yourself on a TV screen. The you in the screen is showing the you watching how to act with self-belief. The more you do this, the more you'll find that you'll quite naturally start to become like the you in the movie. Or maybe I should say the real you. Self-belief doesn't mean arrogance or blindness to one's own shortcomings. Then again, it doesn't mean believing that you're perfect as you are either. Okay, we all have stuff to learn. Your self-belief really needs to be focused on what you'll become. And an important part of self-belief comes from knowing your weaknesses and being relaxed about them, doing what you can about them, but being relaxed. Self-belief gives you the freedom to make mistakes and cope with setbacks by seeing them for what they are, temporary setbacks, not the end of the world. And something else you'll notice. As your self-belief grows, other people believe in you and you help them believe in themselves because it really isn't the feather, it's you. So I hope you found that useful. And if you did, please hit like and subscribe. And if you want to hear when my next video is published, hit the notification bell below. I'm Mark Tyrell of Uncommon Knowledge and hypnosisdownloads.com. And if you'd like to try some of my personal development products, head over to hypnosisdownloads.com and take a look around. And thanks for watching.